Greetings from Wood Turning with Dick. You'll recall this that I bought at Sari Timbers recently. Look at the colour. I know over time that would disappear, that all of this would turn a lot browner and redder and deep, deep colours, and that's what I love about you. I'd like to try and save a lot of this, but it is quite loose. Uh, I'm not sure that's going to work, so I might have to take all of that out. I've got to clean all of this up. I've got lots of loose bark. I've got to strip all that off, clean all this. There's no loose particles for when I pour resin. Because out of this, I'm going to make a big triptych. A big wall hanging river triptych. With just a little bit of turning. I'm also going to incorporate this piece. Again with those gorgeous colours running through there. It's just under two inches thick. So I've not got much of a depth of bowl to make. I had them cut it at Surrey Timbers so it would fit in the car. It's only a small car. <laughs> Couldn't fit the whole plank in there, unfortunately. So this cut mark here is no good to me, so that's got to come off. So we'll mark that up for cutting across there. And the other cut, just above all that colour. This is by no means waste. This will turn into something else. So I'll use this in another piece. For now, I'll be cutting there. I'll also be cutting this off down to about here. One, because there's some ripped wood in, in this piece, in this section and two because I want to open up that gap. It's joined here. This sort of joins it. It's, yeah, as I say, very loose in places. It's quite attractive though. Shame there's so much of it rotted out. Once I've cut that natural edge off, so I've got the full length of it, I'll cut across here, see how strong that bit is on there. <laughs> All right, that's those trimmed up. That's still well attached, not even a wiggle on it, which is great. Next job is to separate a third off of this piece. Now this is going to be a triptych in total, right? And a triptych is three parts. One, two, three. This bit is going to have a bowl in. So there's your wood turning for you. Currently 710 millimetres. Then I'm going to pop a small bowl in there to represent the sun. I think this one is going to be deserved of river colours. So I'm thinking a base of the cobalt blue, which does come up a bit darker when it's in the resin. And then the scuba blue as the second pour, and then clear at the top. So you really get that depth of feeling. The offcuts of this side was very thin, wasn't it? And this side was quite a thick piece. So I've trimmed those up too. And we end up with quite a wide river down to a very narrow point. Or narrow through to wide. And I think another sun up the top here. Um, mark up for cutting a third off. And put a bowl just about there. More simplistic piece. Colours for this one. This is the, somewhat the off cuts. Lenore's decided on she wants blues on the other one. So we're going to call this my piece. I was thinking the pumpkin as the bottom layer. And then the tangerine dream as you come halfway up. And then clear on top. Those three layers. I think that would be fun. We'll see who sells first. I picked all of this out. So I'm going to have to fill that with resin. Well, I don't have to, but I'm going to. Mainly because that was so loose. <laughs> just a rotten old branch. So this just falls apart in your hands. Now I've got a bug for the scab picking. I'm going to go to town. Clean all this up. Clean all this bark. So bear with me a mo. I've done all the other ones. I've just got this one to tackle now, which is not going to be the easiest thing in the world. What to do with you? The only dark thing on the whole piece. Because all the bark's coming out. It's going to be very airy when they put the resin in, so I think it's coming out. Well, that looks a little different than it did earlier. Successfully took that out with some persuasion with a chisel. A lot of it was loose, but as you saw, chisel. Found a connecting bit to that, which explains why that's quite as stable as it is. Happy, happy. 
So I don't know if you can see where I marked the dead center of where I want my bowl. There's my bowl. There's the center. So I want to put a piece of wood on the back, a sacrificial piece, so I can get maximum depth of bowl. So mark that up straight across there. Look down the side, make sure, making sure that's square with my right angle. Lovely. And same again on the back. I could do the same thing this way, or just measure. Gosh, there's the middle of where I want to put my sacrificial bit of wood, which is going to be a piece of beach. And just looking at the centre there, I can just see that by laying that on there is about where it should be. So mark around that. Then I can put my glue there, clamp that on, and in 24 hours we're ready to go. I'm going to do the same to the other piece, which is also looking a lot different than it did earlier. I've still got to build the frames so that the resin can not escape. I've mentioned this before, a, a drill down to set depths for your bowl so that I don't go too deep and come up making a funnel. I'm leaving about 10 mil at the bottom there. So if I'm looking down this side, I can see there's about 10 mil between the bottom, the very tip of the drill and the bottom. Thus way, when I'm turning it out and I get to the bottom of the drill, I know that I've reached the maximum depth that I want to reach. I haven't turned you on its own, not mixed with another wood, in ages. Storm of 87, I was 13 years old. I lived in the North Downs, and me and my father went and cleared footpaths and filled up wheelbarrows full of wood, and to and fro, to and fro, till the sheds were full. And that's how I started turning, with my learning wood being you. I was having a little bit of an issue with the with the bowl gouges that came over this, which is quite soft. Before I start any sanding, I'm about ready to retire for the night. So I'm just going to shove a load of sand and sealer onto these. Help stabilise it a little bit. Not that soft, but it's just different consistency than the other wood. Hence, I was getting a bit of chisel skip as I came over this towards the centre. But otherwise, the shape is very, very nice and tidy. Get an easy sand on that. Good depth to it, good shape, happy. It's only overnight because it's late. <laughs> and I'm not about to start sanding now. It's gonna look quite pretty when it's done though, when I've got rid of all that. So I'm gonna fill all this up with resin. Not too worried about this bit at the moment. And I don't want any resin going in my bowl, do I? So I've cut a little bit of MDF, just a quick circle and I'm going to glue that on as a little barrier. I'll also, once that's glued on and set, um, when I'm pouring the resin, I'll wipe around the outside here with resin to increase that barrier, stop any resin going in my bowl. Don't want any in there, do I? So I've drawn a little circle around the outside edge, where the outside of that is. A little line of glue around the outside edge, because I don't want the glue spurging in the bowl either. I just want a bit of weight, quite a lot of weight on there. A couple of lignum blanks that I use a lot because they're nice and heavy. And whatever else I want to put on top. A quick look, make sure none of that glue is splurging into the middle. It's not, it's close, but it's not. That'll do nicely. So I've knocked together a box. I've coated it in glue on the MDF to stop any penetrating of resin. I've lined it with tape. I've gone a bit over overboard, but I didn't want any leaks. I hate leaks, they're irritating. And I've done a, a rumble sack membrane on the outside in case I do get any leaks, but I can't see it happening. Not with all the reinforcing I've got around the sides and the glue should be absolutely fine. I've also made a lid for it of MDF, which I've hoovered and, and, and cleaned. That'll go on it while the resin is setting between layers to stop any household dust getting on it. 
and then a quick dry run before I actually stick them in place. The bowl can go in there, allowing for the previous cut mark, because I'll be cutting down that cut mark again and tidying up. The line as possible, and then quite a nice big river riverbed. Okay, I think first pour, I'm gonna pour quite a deep pour, not massively deep, I'm going to do four pots at 450 ml each. That's 1800 milliliters. So almost two liters. Nothing that interesting to see on this one. It's a rather plain bit of you. So I don't mind at all putting the gilding over this. Well, that was supposed to be a vibrant pumpkin king mica. Hmm. So the first pour on both of them, you can still see the orange mica dust, quarter tablespoon of mica powder per pot. Now the second pour, a different colour. I think I'm just gonna go with a smidge, one thirty tooth of a tablespoon. Doesn't seem like much, does it? We'll see. Clean that and get all the blue off. And then this one, I'm gonna have me tangerine. Again, doesn't look like much. So look at the scuba. Ooh, that's nice. Now at the moment it is cloudy. Uh, I tend to find that after a few hours of setting that it goes very crystal clear, like glass. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Now, have a look at the tangerine. Tangerine dream. That's nice. Nice light orange. It is a bit worrying at the moment with it looking so cloudy. But I promise you it will go clear. And I think that is ample mica powder to give it the colour that I want. So I need to mix up another four pots, sorry, another three pots of each. So a total of 1800 millilitres. It's gone back to being pumpkin. Hmm. When that clears, that would be pretty cool. And now you're like, is he mad putting this colour on top of that colour? He's insane. Why am I? And for my third pour, I'm going to mix in exactly the same amount. Give that a good clean. I'm going to mix in exactly the same amount as the second pour, but then I'm going to halve it. And so on about 155. Doesn't have to be exact, but I like to get it as close as possible. There we go. Now I can top those back up to 300, then put the hardener in, then mix it all up. Thus way, halved the amount of mica powder. Makes it that little bit more see-through on the third pour. You see? Barely any orange in there. Well, barely. Is a bit. And when that goes see through, even better. Granted, from the angle you're looking at, it looks a bit like mud. I want to see if it comes over this bridge here. Just thought I'd show you quickly by holding the camera, moving the camera, so you can really appreciate the depth and the patterns in, in the in the resin, looking rather nice. There's only about hmm, 20 mil, if that, left of depth. It doesn't look that way, but really there is. There's a lot going on with this one. I think clear from this point onward. I'm tempted to do a little bit more blue, but I think clear will work on this. This one, however, is looking very muddy. It's not. I promise, and the camera really doesn't do it justice. The or See, I'm looking at the piece and it's gorgeous color orange. In the camera, I'm looking at it and it's like a muddy, muddy brown. But I promise you, it is gorgeous in person. Straight on with the clear now. I am absolutely loving this one. Got a film of dust on it, where it's been in my workshop, but, some air bubbles going on 
right on the very top surface, which I'm not worried about because they're going to be skimmed off in the sander. Just a quick prep for the sanding. Going to get rid of all this plastic on the outside, rid of the staples, and then put it through the sander. <laughs> After 47 passes on my friend's industrial sander, it's all lovely and flat. Now, I just need to finish it to get it see-through. I don't know, I might play with that. The last one I did of these, I did to 600 grit to give it kind of a misty look on the top of the resin. And that actually worked really well. Not everything has to be high polish. So we'll see as we go, see how it turns out. But first off, I want to talk to you about the back. You've seen me do French cleats before. If not, and you want to see how they're cut and how they're made, look at a previous video. I've had whinges before about the type of wood I use for the French cleats being a soft wood and they're not, it's not being very pretty. So I use some nice beech. Not that it's going to be seen, but it's nice, hard and strong. And voila, I've drilled these. On this one with the bowl, I've put a drill hole either side of the bowl. On these other ones, there's three going across. And as you know, with a French cleat, that goes on the wall and that hooks onto it nice and strong. Three screws to hold it on the wall. And to keep it on the wall straight, some little spacers for the bottom that go along here. But before I fit those, let's give this a reasonable finish. It went through 80 grit, so I'm going to start on 120. Now I do have some bad news about the other resin one. the My nice orange one, that's my one. I messed up the last pour on the resin and I either mix hardener with hardener or the resin with resin rather than resin with hardener and it's still runny on the top. It's got a little bit hard, but it's just, yeah, no. Um, so that one's for another day. I'm gonna scrape out the soft resin eventually. I'm gonna give it a good few weeks to, to actually harden, but I don't think it's going to. And then I'm gonna scrape it all out, clean it all out, sand it all out, and then re-pour the resin. It's a bit sad, but not all the resin, just the soft stuff. So that's gonna be a nice sticky mess. That is a 320 grit finish all over the back of this. Uh, ignore this mess up here, because it's the back, it doesn't matter. What's the important bit is the resin, although I have sanded the whole thing. I'm gonna put some wax on that, and you get a good gauge of what's beneath that dust. I did have the vacuum on while I was working it. The wood is glorious. There's no sand or sealer on this. It's just straight on with the wax. That is gonna give a very matte finish, which I'm not worried about. That wood has really come to life though. I am looking forward to doing the front. So we're onto the front side. It's getting a bit more exciting now. Can you see that down there? The resin missed a bit and that's gonna bug me. Now I could either take that back indoors, tape up around here and put a little bit of resin in there or chop 12 mil off the top, which I think is what I'm more likely to do because I wanna get this done. It's taken long enough already. Now I'm gonna take this up to 600 grit and I'll put it on time-lapse and bosh, it will be done for that far. And then, then we can cut it up. You can just see the swirls of the mica powder through the resin as I'm looking at it, perhaps not from your view. That's going to do, and I'll do the final finishing once it's all cut up. Bit nervous about this bit, I'll be honest. It does need to be straight as I possibly can on the bandsaw, and then I tidy it up on the table saw because my table saw is not a fan of the resin. Brackets top and bottom all fitted, pretty much finished. I ran the laser over the bottom left hand corner there to uh, mark it up with a piece number, the title and who it was made by. It's nice of me. Now I bought a new sanding block to finish all those cut marks from the table saw. So I've got what, 12 sides to finish by hand through all the grits up to about 3000 and a bit of polish, joy. I'm procrastinating a little bit because I really don't want to be getting on with sanding. What I have done, which I've got to share quickly because I think it's rather genius. I'm rather proud of myself right now, is I put equal size spacers in here, which are just off cuts from the U I was cutting up for various other projects. These are the same thickness. I slid those in there and in there appropriately. So everything's nice and even. I've then measured very carefully between here and here and cut 
blanks the right size so that my key sits in there. When the customer gets it home or I'm at a show, I put this bracket on the wall, which is the middle one, which will be in the middle box. Once that's mounted on the wall, I put the middle to the middle. Forgive my hand right in there, as opposed to the nice laser engraved one there. I couldn't be bothered to get the machine out again. And then you fit the next one. And the next one, this gap here, will then be perfectly spaced for hanging on the wall as long as the brackets are lining up at the back. Proud? Yes. Better than that, I've made a box for each piece. It would be a big box, but the whole thing will be too heavy with the box material and the, the weight of the pieces. It would just be ridiculous. So forget that. But my key fits in the box there, and that fits in there. I'm yet to finish this top, as you know. On the top of the lid, I've put instructions on how to fit it. I know it's not rocket science, but it's nice and makes it nicer and easier for the customer who, who buys it, or to remind me when I'm putting it up at a show. <laughs> uh, next thing you'll see is me finishing the very top, I think. I'm not gonna bore you with the si sanding of the sides. This is the third and final piece. I've sanded the other ones to a high gloss finish, so there's barely a mark on the surface, which is what I love. I'm a little bit particular about the finish, so it's been quite difficult. I've been doing a lot of looking down the side with the light bouncing off it to see if there's any little swirl marks and minimise those to none at all. I sanded the sides to 600 grit using a nice Merca, Merca block that I picked up, which is lovely to use with a swivel on, the, on there. And, the, and it's just the right size for the pads, obviously, because Merca made it for Merca pads, duh. The next job is to do a wet sand I've just done 600, so I'm going to do a wet sand 1,000. Then I'm going to do a wet sand 3,000. But before I do any of that, I'm going to put some sander sealer on all the wood. I'd normally use tissue for putting the sander sealer on wood turned items. But on this occasion, I'm going to use a, a cloth because I think I can get an e more even spread using the cloth than I would if I was using tissue. Just going to put a bit on the top and the bottom and the sides and leave it for... Eh, half an hour or so when I have some dinner. Then I'll come back and do the wet sanding when that, once that sander sealer's all dried and sealed the wood nicely. The sander sealer's long since dried. You're gonna have to put up with the noise in the background, the heater, because it's so cold in here. Initially, wet that surface down. Forgive the sprayer, it's the only thing I could find that's not even very good. I'm actually gonna wet sand at 600 to start with to get rid of some of that sander sealer. Just a quick go over on the edges. Microfiber cloth is kind of essential for this job. Now this is the bit that I found makes all the difference before the polishing compounds, because you can see there, you can see the pattern of the resin underneath is looking glorious, and that's only a thousand grit. This is 3000 grit. And again, I've cleaned that surface off, gonna wet that up good. Next is NW1 Plus Supreme. I'm gonna put a bit on there, that'll do. And I'm going to use my medium soft pad on a low speed to smear it around. And then I can speed it up a bit. May have been a little bit too much. It's getting clearer. Put a little bit less on this time. Go over it again. Clean rag, gonna wipe all of the excess NW1 off. From this angle, that's looking quite glorious, isn't it? Not bad at all, but if you come down so you catch it in the light, can you see all those tiny little swirl marks? So that's twice over with the, N with the NW1. You see the light reflecting, you see all the little swirls. There's nothing too different about any of those swirls. What we're going to do now is take those out. NW2, blue this one. <laughs> I've got a soft pad on, not the ultra soft that comes next. There's a lot less small swirl marks, but I'm going to go over it one more time with this, with the, the blue pad. So 
then finally we've got the ultra soft pad a lovely clean fresh cloth I'm gonna polish that off hopefully it meets my expectations now i love that that's great you can see it so clearly you can see all the reflecting of the mica powder but it's a bit too shiny for my liking i kind of want to take it back to misty i'm not sure what grit yet 600 thousand two thousand or even three thousand but i just want that murkiness on top of the resin to give it that kind of ethereal feel that kind of murky and not quite be able to see the depths like a google maps image rather than being too shiny and too clear i want the wood to show off a bit more rather than the resin in the middle here's the other piece i'll go somewhere about there on when it's on the wall and the other one will be back from gilding shortly but in the interim i'm going to do one at 600 and the other one at 3000 and let's have a look at them just like that 600 grit finish 3000 grit finish see that's not quite so shiny and it's more a matte finish the wood's a little bit shinier than the resin much preferred 600 grit no 3000 yes and the one with the gilded bowl is back from lenore high gloss with some finger marks on it 600 3000 much prefer that it's my preference it's my work do let me know your favorite but out of interest purely in the comments right now i'm going to finish all of these to 3000 well that one's done that can go temporarily back in its box while i finish these and then i'm going to prop it up on the end to show you something a little bit magical about these okay with the light shining through from the back not like it will when it's on the wall but you've got a nice white wall look at the way that comes up Isn't that gorgeous very very pleased and off to the show they go.